Hello, my name's Mark Higgins from UMETSAT and I'm here with July 2014's weather video. This month we have the clouds at night visible. So in the nighttime phases you will see a black and white image. What that is is the infrared picture. The whiter the cloud is, that will show you the colder cloud tops. This will become particularly interesting as we look at some of the bigger storms that are developing over this period and you'll be able to see how they continue into the night. What you can't see are the low warm clouds at night in this particular image. So you can see at the beginning of the month here we have clear skies over most of Central Europe. Quite a lot of clear bright sunny days. Some cloud and weather coming in from the west over the UK and Ireland. You'll see in some of the areas, for example, over Spain on the 3rd, storms developing in the north of Spain and persisting a little bit overnight. And you can see that in the infrared image. And you can just see that variety across the continent. You see that front moving over the UK now on the 4th, bringing rain to the UK and Ireland and coming in to the other parts of West and Central Europe. Quite slow moving if you compare that to some of the winter storms from earlier videos. You'll see that those frontal systems move a lot more slower. They're a little bit less energetic in the summer. You see towards the Atlantic and the Atlantic coasts, a lot of low cloud and fog at various times of the period. So the Met Office in the UK reported that the average temperature across the UK was just over one degree warmer than usual, warmer than the most recent climatic series. And this seems to have been reported across the continent as well. You can see these storms sometimes develop and grow as they come into the continent. What will have happened is the weather systems have picked up a lot of moisture as it's come across the Atlantic. And as you hit the dramatically warmer land, that then causes this ascent of the air which can lead to quite strong weather systems. And you can see that particularly on the 7th here across UK, northern France, extending down towards northern Spain. So some quite strong rain here on the 7th and the 8th in France, Germany and Benelux. So during this period, weather forecasters really need to maintain a continuous watch on the weather. One thing that assists them to do that is UMETSAT's rapid scan service. So one of the Meteosat satellites is tasked to scan Europe every five minutes, and that data is then immediately available to the weather forecasters across Europe. Coming now into the 10th, you'll see an example of a small low pressure system over the Mediterranean. And again, moisture being picked up over the Mediterranean Sea and then developing into thunderstorms, now moving east over Italy and the Adriatic countries. And then as that convection develops, falling as rain over the land. Interesting to see in the nighttime phases where the strong storms are and just see how well developed they are during the day. Remembering that for this, uh, in the daytime, the cyan is where you've got the colder and therefore higher clouds. These very intense storms do generate very, very high clouds. You'll also see that in the mornings and the evenings, the clouds have a much greater shadow, particularly the thick ones associated with the cyan colour, so you can just see how high or how, how great the vertical extent is on the clouds. You can see in Central Europe, the development of the thunderstorms is much more localised. So it's quite a challenge for weather forecasters to work out exactly where the thunderstorms develop, and this will depend on where the local heating is occurring, where there is moisture that's available to then become rain, 
and what sort of things are around to initiate the convection. So how do you get the air lifted? One common mechanism is for air to rise over hills or mountains. You can see again in the Atlantic coasts here on the 15th, some of that lower cloud dissipating very slowly. And you'll be able to see um, where the fog has persisted during the day along some coastlines. The other thing that might be interesting to note is in Turkey, there looks to be a very persistent small blue ice cloud. That is actually a lake that dries up in the summer, Tuzgulu. And that's because salt can look a lot like ice. So where in earlier um, seasons we've seen a lot of sea ice, which has that color and is very persistent, doesn't move. In this case, it's a salt lake, salt having a similar size to ice crystals. So it looks the same to the satellite. From the 18th through to the 20th, we see a phenomenon known as a Spanish plume. So the hot land over Spain is really good at getting a significant amount of rise into the air. So you get this moist air that comes in across off the Atlantic, over Spain, rises and develops these storm systems which then travel north across Spain, France, towards the UK and Ireland. This particular event was very strong. Two fatalities were reported during it and that lasted all the way out until the 20th bringing really significant rain. You can see it quite clearly as well in the overnight images and the infrared images. So those storms really persisting as they come through. A lot of very strong lightning events were reported as well. And you can see that system now traveling across Germany and still bringing a lot of rain, even on the 21st. You'll see that some systems, when it comes to the nighttime, just dissipate and some of them keep going. When you have very, very organized storm systems called mesoscale convective complexes, they can really uh, keep going and keep on feeding each other. And quite often that leads to very, very significant rain, still quite late at night. So when the heating is gone, but the energy is still within the thunderstorm system. To keep the thunderstorms growing, you need a little bit of what's called wind shear. So the thunderstorm generates an updraft which forces air up to the top and then a downdraft. If there's uh, no shear, then the updraft cancels out the downdraft and the storm will die. Getting towards the end of the month, the 24th, a lot of this low cloud and fog in some areas, so particularly northern Spain, Portugal, and also in the North Sea areas. As you look over the seas in the morning, what you might see is what's called sunglint. So, for example, the Black Sea will appear milky grey, and that's just the direct reflection of the sun up towards the spacecraft from the surface. So there's one or two frontal systems that pass during the course of the month. A lot of the weather is bright, sunny spells with unsettled periods. Those unsettled periods are the periods when we've got the thunderstorm activity. So very localized rain, 
um, during those thunderstorm periods, often very localized flooding, flash flooding occurring. And we'll see that again as we come in towards the 28th. Some more storms developing there over UK, France, bringing more rain. See at night time these storms really continuing over northern Spain, southern France, coming over the Pyrenees. So as that air gets lifted over the Pyrenees, just really initiating even further convection. In Europe, we're experiencing our summer storm season. During the same time, there were a lot of very significant Pacific storms of the typhoon season there. You can see some examples of those on our website, the Flickr channel, and here on YouTube. So overall, this is a warmer July than usual. Some areas would have experienced much higher rainfall for a July, and they would have been the areas that experienced the biggest thunderstorms at the time. 